You are hungry. Really hungry. You haven't eaten in a long time and have been running around all morning. Then your plate arrives, full with everything you love to eat. You want to dig in immediately. But instead, someone slaps your fingers. You're bewildered. You try again. Again, a slap on the fingers. You become unsure. Slowly, you take a bite. That worked. But now your plate is taken away. You are told to run three laps around the table first. You don't understand why, but because you are hungry, you do it. The plate is in front of you again. You approach slowly and then take as much as you can. But the plate is taken away again. Now you have to do three push-ups first. The game continues like this. You become unsure, annoyed, stressed, frustrated. You are hungry. At some point the plate is empty, but you cannot feel satisfied with all the stress. You don't know when you will get something again. It used to be much easier before. Welcome to the next episode from Equilibre Animals podcast. This podcast is about the misuse of food. Food is essential, which is why it works very well as an exaction. It's almost too easy. In my opinion, it's not wrong to work for food. It should just be done in a way that is appropriate for the species. And that's where the problem begins. Species appropriate means hunting and eating, or not bringing the prey dummy 100 times and then earning a minimum amount of food. For us, working for food has a different context. We humans see it economically rationally. We know there's a reward, a medal or a salary for performance. The animal does not have this awareness. It is completely dependent on our thinking and actions. When an animal is hungry, it looks for something to eat. This cannot be compared to a 9 to 5 job. Eating is essential, a reward and feels good. We eat because we are hungry but mostly because it is, tastes good and relaxes us. We can become dependent and we are dependent, otherwise we will eventually starve or at least become ill. Power of food is ultimately power over life and death. Remember, grandma or mom forbade the cookie or used it as a reward. You were not allowed to get up until the plate was empty. It's about this power and the abuse of this power. Food is dealing with an animal can help. It can build trust and facility exercises. But controlling the food also makes the animal dependent on us. And if we build training and education only around food, we become dependent on food too. The animal does not necessarily know when it will get something to eat again. Therefore, it likes to eat everything it can get. Many animals that have no competition eat comparatively slowly. Animals that are low ranking in the pack or have to fight or had to fight for food often eat faster or defend their food. Food is one of the essential resources. It builds trust when your animal regularly gets food. It learns that you take care of it knowing that it is dependent on you because you have control over the food. Your dog understands this very well. Regular feeding times and enough food are important for the physical and mental health of your dog. Also, because you are predictable for your animal. Animals despise nothing more than uncertainty. It causes enormous stress. We humans know my fridge is full. I will definitely get something to eat tonight, and if it's a frozen pizza. Your animal does not have this certainty. Ideally, it learns that it can trust you and you are regularly there with the food. doesn't have to be the, the minute. It doesn't hurt at all to share or give something away. You don't have to nibble on dog food, but you can certainly give something from your plate. Oh no, that is a taboo. No, that's forbidden. Then the dog will learn to beg and become dominant and take over the world. 
No, it won't. I have found this out in numerous self-experiments. Basically, dogs are social beings that live in family groups or cooperative communities. We know from wolves that they always first provide food for the youngest and weakest animals before they eat from the prey themselves. That is extremely social. In animal education, food is not used as leverage. That is unnatural and counterproductive. The young animals or peers should survive. The adult animals correct their offspring or troublemakers directly and not indirectly through food. Dogs share food and dogs prefer people who share food. Of course, a street dog that always had to fight for food sees the world different. With But even this dog can learn that there is always enough food. Sharing food is a social act. How did we start our cooperation once? Wolves and humans share food. What do people do who are out with the dogs in the remotest areas? I have visited the Carpathians from Poland to Romania and met shepherds with dogs everywhere. There are no food dispensers. They don't haul wheelbarrows full of kibbles through the wild or drop food passes from helicopters. They share bread and cheese. What did the dogs get to eat before humans invented the can? Table scraps. I claim that worldwide this is still the most common method. And now, the advantage for humans, when then can exploit control over the food, you can train and educate your dog. A few thousand years ago, the domestic dog developed through this simple principle. But you can also manipulate and control, enforce dependence, obedience and submission. Personally, I think that I am abusing my dog's trust and sustainably destroying the basis of our relationship. I am unpredictable to my dog. I am unsocial. I don't want to work that way. I look for other ways when my dog shows behavioral problems. I don't want to manipulate him through a vital resource. For me, that is extortion. We all know how well strikes, strikes and extortions over wages work, for example, and how unpleasant it is when you are the weaker one. Food as a reward or distraction is also a tight from walk. If you are not careful, you quickly reward the wrong behavior or manipulate the dog with treats so that it seems to function at first. But the cause of the problem is not addressed and the dog hasn't understood what is actually about. Let's take the example of the dog with meeting difficulties again. Sit down and feed treats when the dog is quiet, a reward. Oh, so he is quiet as a distraction. In both cases... It is symptom treatment because the cause of the problem is not addressed. In this case, food is not a basis for building up security and trust. Personally, I see food in connection with stress critically anyway. You are afraid of a fat, black, hairy spider. And someone you trust drags you into a dark corner in the basement and holds the sneakers in front of you. So you are not afraid anymore. Does that work? Probably not. These are education methods you wouldn't even want to use on children today. If you're not good, then you get no dessert. This is extortion. With my fear dogs and street dogs, I use food to build trust. Why should I put this trust at risk and then use food and abuse trust? A problem with training with a prey dummy is also the lack of sense of achievement. Prey is hunting, is hunted, caught, killed and eaten. When the bag is abused as an educational measure, the reward never comes, because the bag is always taken away again and the dog is never allowed to eat in peace. That causes stress. And at least <laughs> there are people who let their dog starve with the argument that the wolves doesn't get something to eat every day either while they sit there and enjoy their steak. The domestic dog has as much in common with the wolf as the humans with the Neanderthal. The Neanderthal didn't have something to eat every day either. No drive-in counter, freezer or delivery service. He couldn't munch on his ham sandwich three times a day. 
We do it because we can. But just because we can do something doesn't give us the right to do it. Always ask yourself, if you would like to be treated that way by someone you might depend on and trust. And if I hold the pug dog next to the wolf, it doesn't matter how much DNA the dog still has from the wolf, most domestic dogs are no longer able to survive on their own. Thank you very much for listening. The next episode will be about the development and expectation we have for our dogs today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again. Bye.